Does someone know who this guy is? Okay. His name is Carl Benz. And in 1885, Carl Benz achieved two amazing feats. One is that he created the first vehicle, the first auto vehicle, and the second that he crushed the auto vehicle. <laughs> he was a very smart engineer, but he didn't take into consideration that the, he was part of the equation. So he's a human. He was, he was an issue. Um, from that point on, uh, we have tried to patch around this issue with airbags, ABS systems, tracks, traction controls, and all other sorts of technologies, but we haven't figured out the um, actual problem, which is the driver. So for that reason, I'll be talking about a very hot topic in the tech world today, which is autonomous vehicles. So just a quick overview of what I'm going to be talking about today. Um, we're going to discuss whether we are actually the problem, how do they work, the ethics behind the software, and what we should expect in the future. <coughs> so are we actually the problem? Should we actually, you know, uh, consider autonomous vehicles and I would argue that we should because of the following statistics. First of all, the, the first half of this year there has been an increase of 10.4 percent in the accidents, fatal accidents in the United States. Around the world there are a million two hundred thousand accidents, fatal accidents, and in the US alone 33,000. And does anybody have a guess of one of the one of the fastest growing uh, reasons why there have been so much, so many accidents lately? You are right. In 2011, 23% of the accidents in the U.S. were texting related or, or linked to. So, given that we have these issues and lack of attention while driving, autonomous vehicles could be the solution. So, this is a, looks like a regular vehicle with a huge camera on top and I don't know if you guys can see, but there's a camera here as well. There's one in the rear and some other sensors, but let's focus on the, the top camera first, which is called a laser range finder. It contains 64 lasers that rotate in a very fast speed, and it can map out the whole surrounding of the car. And as you can see, it's, it's a rotational uh, hardware. <coughs> now a little bit about the front camera. It's used to detect if there's uh, pedestrians, um, traffic lights, or and even the, the cars in front, because it always have to keep a, a safe space. Things that a human should do, but they don't. Now, this is basically what the car sees. Um, this is a very simplified version. Uh, can you guys see it? Yeah. So, yeah. So, it maps the street and can see where the sidewalk is, the lanes. Now, we put the cars in. And from, you know, it looks simple. You can write a program where if you see an object, you just go around it, slow down or something. But these objects are dynamic, right? So it's very hard for you to do that. So, for example, that vehicle over there, in front of it, it has some cones because there's a construction site, as you can see the vehicle here. So it's predicting that it's going to go left and change lanes. And you might be asking yourself, but yeah, great, but what about all the other cars? Exactly, all the other cars are there. So it has to calculate all the trajectory for the rest of the cars. And this is basically the end goal, which is know exactly into where the car can go, whether it can continue you know, going forward, and the green track is basically where the car has to continue traveling. And at the end of it all, it's simple inputs, throttle, brake, left and right. So this is how a car should this is how the software sees uh, the car movement in a highway. So you can see the live image of the highway and, you know, simple, there's a truck, a car, stay on your lane, keep track if somebody's going to go in front of you. Seems simple, but when you go to urban areas, things get more complicated. Um, you have pedestrians, you have people on, on bicycles, cars coming everywhere, traffic lights. So yeah, you have to keep track of all of that. And apart from that, there are some, you know, edge cases such as a police officer. If, if he asks you to stop, you have to stop. If he tells you to go, you should go. And there are also edge cases where maybe there's a old woman in the middle of the street and then an electric car going after a duck. You have to account for that as well, I guess. I don't know if you guys can see it. That she's chasing a duck in the middle of the street. <laughs> but now in a serious note, 
here we have a case where the autonomous vehicle actually might have saved a life. This is a cyclist that didn't respect the law. He is crossing the street when the sign is red for him. As you can see, now it's green for us, but he's still crossing. And the car knew that he couldn't go because he already calculated the trajectory before, beforehand. So he knew he couldn't move. As soon as he passes, he moves. Let's take a deeper look into that. So as you can see, the car always knew the existence of that, that bicycle there, even though it maybe would never change our, our path. Um, and, and the lasers send out these signals where it, whenever it reaches an object, it maps it. And the cyclist is over there. So I'm just going to change the camera this way so that you guys understand more or less what's happening. So see, you can barely see it, but with the machine learning, it knows this is a cyclist. With only these few dots, it knows that it's an object and a cyclist. So that's when they, they render the, the polygons and everything else. So in this case, uh, the software managed to you know, deal with the situation. But what if it can't? What if it's going downhill and there's no brakes um, and you have to hit, hit something? Okay. So um, these students from MIT created this website called Moral Machine. I don't know if everybody ever seen it, but it basically gives you scenarios and two options. So we're going to go through this together. So this is the first scenario. So if you guys want to take a second to read it. OK, so over here, it's either the death of a dog and a woman that are crossing the green light, or it's the death of a dog, a woman, elderly women, and a pregnant woman, and a male executive. I'm just going to crash here, but these are going to be safe and sound. Which one would you guys prefer? So I'll start with this one with a raise of hands. Nope. This one. I'll have to agree with you guys in this one. Um, another scenario. If you guys want to take a quick read. This one. No one. This one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Last one. I want to see one of the pet lovers here. <laughs> this one? <laughs> this one? OK. So in the end of it all, it compares with the rest of the world. These were my results. I don't know if they are accurate or not, but apparently I like to save female athletes. <laughs> and I don't <laughs> like cats. <laughs> um, and you can see here is the world, the average of the world. And here is my results. Um, it's pretty interesting. So what to expect in the future of autonomous vehicles? In my opinion, and I believe most of you may share the opinion with me, is that our system is not efficient. 96% of the time, our cars, in the average in the US, 96% of the time, our cars are parked. We're not using them. And it's a very inefficient um, system currently. So. <coughs> You know, this, this is inefficient for consumers and an opportunity for companies. So I'll talk quickly about the initiatives of these companies. So I'll start with Tesla. Tesla told, uh, said that their next steps now will be release cars with software where you buy your car and whenever you're not using it, it's just going to roam around the city working as a cab for you. So it's basically mining for you. Uh, Uber said that their uh, long-term strategy will actually be having cars with no drivers. So it's just going to roam around. Whenever you have need a car, you just call them. So you don't actually need to own a car, car. And Google is doing a great job with the software and hardware. All the all the those gifts I showed you guys are all from Google. They're doing a great job. And these are also other companies that are taking a stance in auto the the autonomous vehicle race. I included Apple here. Um, they said they're going to come out with a car in 2021. They haven't showed anything yet, but I think something to look forward to. And in the end, this is an article I read in the um, New York, no, Wall Street Journal. Uh, you guys can read it, but basically there is a, a mission that in 2046, there should be no deaths related to, to traffic. Obama is endorsing driverless vehicles, and there are actually cars on the streets right now with no drivers walking around. So 
if you're going to cross the street, make sure somebody's driving or not. It depends on you. Um, and the conclusion is that I, hopefully, I hope that in the future we'll look back and laugh at the fact that we were so, it was so weird to have somebody driving and not just get into the car and wait for it to get to point B. Thank you.